Hello there. Welcome to another presentation on uh, different types of functions. Remember, we have looked at um, constant functions, linear functions, and the absolute value function. Now we are going to look at uh, function. Uh, we are going to look at quadratic functions and the polynomial function in general. We are not going to uh, go into detail, but just going to remind you the essential things we need to know about uh, quadratic functions, especially the properties of the graph and how we can sketch the graphs. So let's start uh, this way. The quadratic function in general is given in this form. I think we know this quadratic expression ax squared plus bx plus c. And uh, we can manipulate this uh, uh, expression and they give it in a general form which says a a in brackets x minus h squared plus k whereby a, b, c, h and k are real numbers and now I would like to focus on this one first of all but before we do, we do that let's um, look at this how do we get to this this is basically what we call the basic function which is which of which this one is a variation of this so in this case to get something like this we will be considering that our a is equals to 1 our h equals to 0 and our k equals to 0 at this point i would like to remind you of the discussion we had when we were looking at uh, the absolute value function remember the absolute value function was given in general as uh, a absolute value of x minus h plus k all that knowledge which you learn there is still useful here for now you can just take you can take the square here like a function like the bars here are a function applied to x minus uh, x minus h here and here is the quadratic the square applied to h minus h that has got exactly the same kind of uh, value but now let's first of all look at this what we call the parent function for these types of functions so what we have here we have got x f of x equal to x squared so what you can see that for any real number this is always defined in other words what you can say is that the domain of this function is actually the set of real numbers so it's defined everywhere on the real number line so now if we can choose this say we choose x to be equals to zero and we know that we square zero get zero so y is equal to zero and i was saying the point zero zero is on the curve so we've got that point there and if we take now let's say we take x equals to one squaring that we will get y is equals to one then the point one one is on the curve again if we take x equals to minus one then we realize that uh, uh, y is equals to one so which means this point here is equals this point here is on the graph now as i've taken here the small square to represent a unit now there's something which we are seeing at this point here we said a fun for a function to, to be a function it must be that given an input we get a unique output yes for minus one we get a unique output there for minus for one we get a unique output which is one and for minus one we get a unique output which is one but what is new here what is we didn't see with the line but we saw that with the parabola with the absolute value function because the absolute value function absolute value of minus one is the same as absolute value of one and that is one and this parabola also is giving us the same thing that the f of minus one is equal to f at one which is equal to one these type of functions now is, I'm including 
the absolute value function and the Ebola and type of functions we call many to one. Remember the line was giving us was we said it was one to one. In other words, we can get two values here, like x1 different from x2, but f of x1 equals to f of x2. This is what is being the message we are being given here. Look that this is going to happen with minus 2 and 2, minus 4 and 4. So if we had 2 here, we know this is going to be 4, a 2 there. 1, 2, 3, a 2, square root of 2 is going to be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And at minus 2, and again, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So the graph here would be something which we already know, which is something like that. And now, now let's now see, uh, observe something here. So we can see now that the graph, because of this nature which you have here, f of f of uh, minus x equals to f of x. We say we see that the graph is symmetric around the y-axis. Now this distance here is equal to the distance there. Now we see that the, from the left, the function is decreasing and it's got a turning point there. And the turning point is exactly at 0, 0. Let's say we say here TP for turning point is at 0, 0. That's what this parent function is showing us. And then it develops symmetrical around that. So now let's start trying to understand what happens now when the graph is like this when the, the first expression is like this let's start first of all by setting our a equals to maybe let's start by changing a at this point here a was one if we take a to be two what would happen every value here like value one you multiply by two would basically say f of x is equal to 2x squared. Now we can call this 2 the amplitude of uh, the what uh, the parabola. In other words, it's accelerated the growth of parabola or slow it down. Then in this case, 2, note that 2 is greater than 1. So if we take f at 1, this will be 2 multiplied by 1 squared, which will be 2. So now instead of developing there, the value is going to be somewhere there. And then this is f at minus one, sorry. Now if taking f at one on the right hand side, this will be two multiplied by one squared, which is going to give us two again. So for there, we're going to give us that. And when we get to f at two, that will be two, two squared, which will be two squared is four times f, two, that will give us eight. Equally, at minus 2, that will be 2 minus 2 squared, that will give, will give us 8. So at that point now, the, the value of the function will be up there, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, somewhere out there. And on the negative side also, somewhere there. So drawing that graph, The graph would look like this. So it will come this way at 0, still 0, because 0 squared times 2 is 0. Then it will go up that way. So what we see that as 2 is greater than 1, the, gra the graph simply grows faster and it narrows towards the, uh, the, the y-axis. Now, let's suppose this with um, f of x equals to half. In other words, our a is less than y, x squared. What are we going to do? The original function which was at 1 will be half. It's going to be somewhere here. 
and there it will be halved to be somewhere there. Where it was 4, it will come back here to 2. And the way it was 4 again here, it is going to come back to 2. So what happens now? The graph sort of opens up. So what we see here, we see two effects here. Then if the A is equal to 1, we get the standard graph. If A is equal to 2, we get the graph narrowing this way. And if A is equal to half, the graph opens up this way. So that is what's going to happen there. That will that's going to be the same kind of behavior with any number which is greater than 1 and with any number which is less than 1. Less than 1, the graph opens up. More than 1, the graph narrows up. That's the thing. So now I think we have seen what is the effect of this uh, A then. Now I think now we can forget about A, set A equals to 1 and now monitor what will be the effect of, of H. Then later we'll move to K. Now we actually mentioned that the domain of, we actually mentioned that the domain of F here, in this case this F, was x such that x is a real number. In other words, simply domain is equal to a set of real numbers. That's the thing. Now the range, the range, not what the range is. This parabola it starts the lowest point here is zero, then it increases going up, which means the range as the values y real numbers such that y is greater or equals to zero. So that is the range of that function. The domain is the reals and the range is actually the half line starting from zero going upwards. That is very important to note. Now let's set our a equals to one. And then in this case here, take an example of a function which is says f of x is equals to x minus 1 all squared plus 0 for k from that. So what we saw in this function we said the function has got turning point when x coordinate is 0 or when the argument of the function argument of the function in this case I mean this expression which is acted upon by the, the square so when the argument is zero. So if we apply that here, we'll say this modify function should behave as the parent function. So we'll say when x minus one is equal to zero, then this function will have a turning point. But this means that x is equal to one solving this equation. Then now we want to know what is the, the y coordinate. So the y coordinate would be simply f at 1, this here, and then this will be 1 minus 1 evaluating here, all squared plus 0 for k, then that is going to be equals to 0. So which means the turning point of this uh, function now will be 1 comma 0. That's the point. So in other words, the turning point has been shifted by 1 and also the line of symmetry will be shifted by 1. Actually, the line of symmetry, line of symmetry will be x equals to 1. Like here, the line of symmetry is the y-axis, is the y-axis, which is x equals to zero. So then we would have a line of symmetry running here. Remember our original graph is the black one here. Okay, there we have our original graph and according to this, this graph is shifted to the right by one. So what we have here, we would have the graph moving and having the left of symmetry there. Then on the other hand, Let's say we have the function 
f of x equals to x plus 3 all squared plus um, let's say let's just change this and say let's say our k equals to 1 now we expect this function to behave exactly like the parent function f of x equals to x squared so this one at the turning point when x is 0 and else when what is squared is equal to 0 when the argument is equal to 0 so when you come here we we'll say this would have a turning point when x plus 3 is equals to 0 solving this equation this will imply that x is equal to minus 3 now calculating y would we'll say y is equals to f at minus 3 which will then evaluate here as minus 3 plus 3 all squared plus 1 where here we are squaring 0 plus 1 this is going to give us 1 so for this the turning point will be will be minus 3 1 that's what it is so now if we see that this coordinate here is actually equal to what is our k there and then this minus is equal to what would be our h if we write this function as f of x equals to x minus minus 3 all squared plus 1 so then what happens here now we can see our h and our h actually give us the line of symmetry to be x equals to minus 3 and then our coordinates this gives us a turning point so we've got here minus 1 minus 2 3 we've got minus 3 there and the 1 that would be the turning point then we'll be interested then in where the graph casts the y-axis the graph will cut the y-axis when x is equal to 0 let's say y intercept so that will occur when x is equal to 0 so then we we'll take the function f and evaluate it at 0 so what did you do we we'll subtract substitute this here by 0 then we've got minus 3 minus 3 squared that will give us 9 plus 1 and then that will give us 10 so the point 0 10 would be on the graph exactly on the y-axis so looking at this um, uh, uh, what has happened here you say the graph is seated to the left to the left such that the turning point is there and then somewhere up here the graph will cut the y-axis so this is what we're going to see this will be our standard graph so now it is shifted to the left by three units and up by one unit so what we do is we'll say minus one minus two minus three that is to the left then upwards one that is that then if you check here it's one two three four five six seven eight so up somewhere there ten the graph will cut the uh, the y-axis so now I think now it has been clear how the this uh, how this these parameters a h and k influence the parabola one more thing is the following once we've got the type of function that like we've got here we've got f of um, x equals to equals to a x squared plus b x plus c which we say is the same thing as a x minus h squared plus k you must know that this form can be reduced to that by just removing the brackets there which you can quickly do and have this as a 
brackets x squared minus 2 x h um, plus h squared plus k removing the brackets what we have here we're going to have a x squared plus minus 2 a h x plus h squared plus k so as you can see this coefficient here is our b and that is our c so my point is that once we've got a, a, a type of function like this we've got now here we've got um, a quadratic function then let's suppose we're told that this quadratic function is at a certain unknown value of x its value is um, let's say 16 and now we want to know what is x and then that immediately generates us a quadratic equation which would be a x squared plus bx plus c equals to 16 which we can manipulate and get it exactly in the normal form of a quadratic uh, equation which in this case we can uh, generally represent as a x squared plus b x plus c equal to zero by basically subtracting both sides this um, uh, 16 we'll get a zero here and what we're going to have here is a c minus 16 which is just a constant which you can simply take it as a, a constant if you want to make it dif look different you can say c prime which is a result of inter interaction between this c and that uh, minus 16 there then there we've got a quadratic equation then you rem should remember that the quadratic equation we can solve them by factorization or graphically the solution of this quadratic equation what does it mean it will mean basically the intersection of the graph with the x-axis we can illustrate that this way let's say we have an equation for this graph and this graph is in this position and then setting up an equation for this graph which would be let's say a x plus a x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero meaning we'll be talking about these two points here that point and that and you must note here in that case that if ever a quadratic equation has got a, a solution is either the solution the solutions are two different real numbers which would be in this case or it would be this case where you've got one real number which is repeated or otherwise it has got no real number solution so here i urge you to call and revise your factorization so that when you handle equations which involve quadratic expression you can be able to factorize and solve the equation the equations so the next thing which we're going to look at uh, now is um, the following which is very very important a parabola is what you've seen is something like this symmetric around y and we said it's a function which is many to one and that is very important and now if we were to check whether a function is many to one what you do is you would use what you, what you call a horizontal line test so if a function a graph of function passes a horizontal line test it shows you that the function is many to one what should happen exactly like happened in the parabola here this value here of x will give us a value which is at that green level there and that value there at minus x will give us the same value so it's many one two to one value so in other words what that what it means it means that when a function is many to one the horizontal line will cut the graph of that function at more than one point 
for example let's say we've got a function let's say a straight line like this if you apply a, a horizontal line test this horizontal line will only cut the lead line only at one point which means basically the function is one two one but if it cuts at more than one point then the function is many to one. We can also look at what we call cubic functions, which in general are given in this way. I'm not going to go in detail on this, but I'm just going to show you that if we've got here a is equals to one, b equals to zero, c equals to zero, and d equals to zero we get a function f of x equals to x cubed which you can see this function when x is zero the value is zero which means it passes through the origin and when x is one when x is one one cubed is one so the point one one is on the curve so it's somewhere there and when x is minus one when x minus 1, you got minus 1, y is equal to minus 1, which is somewhere there. And this graph in general, you will see that these are type of graphs which are sort of going to go this way. Now, instead of being symmetric around the y-axis, or anything, what we've got here, we've got symmetry across the point. In other words, if you take a straight line, you will see that this point is symmetrical to the other point there and the any other point this side will have a symmetrical across the origin to that other so that what is we have uh, with the uh, cubic uh, um, functions so again in general the same thing is going to happen with cubic functions once we've got cubic functions we have to deal with the cubic equations and the cubic equations because of this power 3, you will find that the cubic equation normally will also have three possible solutions. Now we can just think of what is happening here. We started with 0, which was a constant function, but that is not very interesting for now. When we go to linear functions, which was f of x equals to a x plus b we notice that the power of x here is 1 and the line will always have a unique 0 on the x-axis and when we pass over to a parabola which is ax squared plus bx plus um, c for example if the parabola is positioned this way you say that it's going to have two solutions, two different solutions, or one repeated root, or it has no solution. So here what you've got, you've got two possible solutions as zeros corresponding to this power 2 here. So equation of power 1 will have one solution. Equation of power 2 will have two possible solutions, and equation of power 3 will have three possible solutions. Now is here, the graph of para uh, quad, uh, uh, cubic equation in general will look more or less like this as more or less something like this you can see it's just mimicking this kind of behavior then we've got a zero there a zero there and the possible zero there that's what we have with the um, uh, cubic uh, functions then from there onwards we can carry on to power four and so on which will give us interesting graphs which we're not going to look at now but in general what we have now we have we can now put all these functions from power one to power n under the same class of functions we call polynomial functions which generally are given by expression like this where all these a n's are real numbers which can be zero or non-zero and in particular in this case if we've got um, let's say all the a n's equal to zero except for a one and a zero what we're having we will have a function like f of x 
equals to a1 x plus a0 which is the same thing as a x plus b we have to a linear function and in the case that all the a n's are equal to zero except for a2 a1 a0 then we have a function of the type f of x equals to a2 x to the power 2 plus a1 x plus a0 which will be somewhere up to there then we are going to have our quadratic function and so on in other words in general if we've got uh, a n different from zero then what we're going to have here we're going to have a polynomial f of p of x which is equal to a n x to the power n plus dash 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 possible let's say a 1 x plus a 0 then what we have there we can say we've got a polynomial of degree n a polynomial of degree n in other words if we set up an equation now and say here let be px equals to 0 then we're going to have an equation which has got n possible solutions or n possible roots so in this case this concludes the presentation on one particular type of function which can group as polynomial functions as we have done here so at this point I would like to say thank you for listening. Later we shall proceed to other different types of functions. Thank you for listening. My name is Charles Swazfarimsi.